So hi, so welcome to my garden again. So it's again, and we're going to do some uh, some Tai Chi this morning. We're going to do Chen Ching's uh, animals. Well, not all of the animals. We're going to do a, a few of the animals. We're going to. I'm going to show them in a in a like a set of qigong that I kind of evolved over the time that I've been teaching. So less rattling from me, and we'll get straight into it. So we're standing with our feet about the same distance as our hips or our shoulders apart. I put these. Uh, uh, lines on the floor. Put this gaffer tape on the floor here. This duct tape on the floor to to measure out my shoulder width. So standing with the feet about the same distance as our hips or our shoulders apart. Feet parallel to each other. As always, head as if it is suspended from above. Pelvic area tilted forwards. Feels like it's hanging down from that suspension from above. Sink the chest to round the back. Sink the ribs to fill the lower back. We really want to take that uh, lumbar lordosis out of the lower back. We don't force it. Okay, uh, sink the ribs to fill the lower back. This with the pelvic area uh, tilted forwards kind of really does take that lordosis out of the lower back. I know I have a, a little bit of lordosis there, but I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, tongue the roof mouth, did I say that? Uh, ears feel like being pulled back, skull lifting off the, the spine, jaw parallel to the floor. When the arms are close to the body, keep that small gap underneath each armpit as if cradling a small bird's egg underneath there. Uh, feet flat on the floor. Uh, relax the hips, the knees and ankles, never lock out the, the knees, uh, you, you don't want to have too much tension around here. Put your mind, your intent, your awareness into the area that's about three fingers below the belly button and in the centre of the body. The dancing, visualise a, a fist sized ball there, You're letting your mind set into that area. And you start to turn that from side to side. So just turning the waist, waist turning exercise. Turning the waist, turning the weight of the body from one leg to the other leg. Make sure you're not just tensing the hip flexor muscles against the hips to get this movement. You're moving from your center. So you're floating through this area that we call the, the qua, uh, which roughly translates as the, the energy gate. Turning. So we went through uh, the waist turning exercises quite extensively in the in a previous film. Uh, I think it was called waist turning and arm swings. Uh, I'll link it to this film here. I'll link it. Turning. So, if you want more details, go back to, to that film. Okay, so in the other film, we, we raised the, the heels ever so slightly, so I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail of that one. We're going to do this one where we're, we're sitting down, and like this, sitting down. Really be mindful of your knee alignment in this one. Make sure you're not twisting your knees. When the legs at its fullest, you want more weight towards the rear of the foot. Uh, we talked about the, the triangles, the two triangles that make up the foot, or the two triangles of the foot, I know the words. Uh, so when the legs are at its fullest, you want more weight towards the triangle at the rear of the foot. Soften the insteps. Really feel yourself sitting down onto that supporting leg. Make sure as you sit down, the ribs don't flare out, the back doesn't curving. Sitting down. And I want you to start to raise the toes of the unsupported foot. Or oh, say raising the toes of the unsupported foot. You're not supposed to raising the toes, you're levering the toes away from the body. So sitting down onto that supporting leg, and you're just levering the toes out to the side. Levering the toes out to the side. And we're gonna be working on this later when we do the, when we get into the animal frolic, the animal moves. So make sure it's not just this. It's this sinking down, turning the waist down, levering against that supporting leg to push the leg out, the leg and the foot out to the side. And this is a, an empty stance. You're dropping all the way to the body onto that one leg. Empty stance, dropping down, Spiraling down, feel yourself spiraling down through your, your spiral lines, the anatomy trains, the spiral lines, which again we've worked on. And it's true of all the things in Tai Chi, they are, they are the, the learning process is layered. The learning process is, is quite slow in Tai Chi, as it should be. Uh, that slow uh, progress or process, I don't want to say progress, process, it develops patience. We know the, the levels in Tai Chi, they can't be skipped. I see a lot of people in Tai Chi, they want to skip levels, get to the to the harder, the farging levels, and you can't really skip levels. If uh, you do skip levels, there'll be big holes in your art. Let it develop, and over time, with through practice, diligent practice. This is the, the kung fu, or kung fu, as they say in the West. And kung fu is not really a style of martial art. Kung fu means uh, hard work, hard work over a long period of time. It's the hard work you put into your art. If you are trying to skip levels, then you're not working hard. Sinking down. And pressing the body against the ground, so it's not locking the joints out. You're opening all the joints in between the bones. You have, what, 206 bones in the body, 230 joints in the body. Really mentally open all of those joints. Feel them filling 
with that fluid that lubricates the joint, the synovial or synovial fluid. And feel all the joints kind of keep them open and feel the bones floating on that fluid. Nice alignment. Open all the joints and sinking down. And feel is the feel the weight of the body compressing that fluid in between the joints. So you're not squeezing the fluid out of the joint, you're compressing it like compressing oil into a hydraulic cylinder. And just release that compression. Or allow that compression to release. Add that to the waist turn and use that to move you. Okay, change to raising the heel. Well not so much raising the heel, you're kind of levering the knee out to the side pulling the heel in. I already used the connective tissue and my face here, the white stringy stretchy connective tissue inside the body to and with the weight turn to pull the heel in towards you. So you really have to be mindful of the inner workings of your body. This is called interior section. Interior section is the inner feeling of the workings of your body. So don't let your mind wander away. Really stay focused on what you're doing. You're not just waiting to oh, get onto the more interesting stuff. Oh, this is boring. Let's do something more interesting. If you truly are in the moment, then you can't get bored. It's that wandering mind thinking of uh, uh, the outcome or thinking of things of the past and the future. It gets bored. And truly in the moment, you can't get bored. So really engaging what you're doing here. Really developing that interior section, that inner feeling of the workings of your body. The more you work on it, the, the deeper the understanding and feeling gets. And that's the, the process of touching. Really being mindful, that's what makes this a, a moving meditative practice. And this is still a, an empty stance, sinking down, spiraling down. You can feel as if your foot is sinking down into the ground. Okay, your arms, your arms are just moving because of this force coming out from the waist. Okay, then let's change to raise one heel. One so you might get uh, what one of my instructors called it a brain fart there when you go to these coordination exercises. You have a, a, a little bit of a stutter. That gets less and less the more you practice this, these coordination uh, movements. So you don't get those stutters, those brain farts. Change. Raise the other toe, the heel. And again, it's a gradual process with Tai Chi work on the, the I'm not going to say simpler movements or easier movements. You have to work, yeah, you go through the process. You gradually increase the coordination as you go through the process. Okay, so that's the waist turning. So now we're going to go into uh, into our cross connections. Uh, a cross, next, cross connection exercise we worked on in a, in a previous film. So I'm going to go into a little bit of detail here, but if you want more details, then go back to that previous film. Again, I'll, I'll link it up here. Okay, so standing with your feet about the same distance as your hips and your shoulders. So we're in our, our wall chi posture. Feet parallel to each other, soften the insteps. Head as if suspended from above, tongue roof muscle. All the requirements, all the alignments, all the uh, postural alignments we, we worked on at the start of this film. Mind into the dante in that area, about three fingers below the belly button and in the center of the body, and just start to move it from side to side. So moving it from side to side. So not swaying from side to side, moving it from side to side. Sitting down on that supporting leg. When the leg's at its fullest, you have a, a straight line down from the earlobe down through the very center of the foot. More weight towards the rear of the foot. Uh, try not to let this knee go too far forwards. Ideally, you don't want it to go any further forward than the, than the toes. So really sitting down. Moving from side to side. More weight towards the rear of the foot when the leg's at its fullest. Floating through this area, so you're not just pushing through this area here. You're moving from the Dantian and floating through this area, like a boat floats through water, so slightly submerged, but floating on the surface free, so really opening up all the joints. Breathing in and breathing out, breathing in, breathe out, nice deep abdominal breath, really feel like you're breathing into that area that's about three fingers below the belly button and in the center of the body. Imagine that ball inflating and deflating with the in-breath, as again we've worked on in previous films. Yeah, you can do the, uh, the reverse breathing here, as we worked on in one of the last films. Uh, but only do that if you are a little, a little bit further along the path and you're not having to think too much about the <laughs> and it's making you have those brain farts there, okay? And it should be comfortable mentally and physically. It's important mentally and physically. We don't want to push ourselves. Yeah, we do want to kind of 
move forward with our heart. Again, it won't be rushed. You shouldn't try to rush it. So if you're really, really, really struggling, then stick at the level four for a little bit longer. Until that just becomes normal. Just the way that you do things. And that's the, the truth about Tai Chi. They want to become just the way that you do things. So you keep repeating, repeating, repeating until you just... It, it, it is just the way that you do things. So in a previous film we worked on, imagine sinking down into the ground, then bouncing out. Or imagine standing on something floating on water, like standing like in a rowing boat or on a floating platform or a raft, sinking down and then being pushed back out. You can use that one. Like you imagine standing on a trampoline or on a bouncy castle. And sinking down. Make sure you're not swaying. Try and keep the shoulders parallel to each other and parallel to the floor. So you're not swaying from side to side. Keeping nice and upright. You can imagine you're balancing something on the top of the head like a bowl of water. You don't just spill it down your face. So as if standing up in our own boat, balancing a bowl of water on the top of the head. And really use the visualization there. Don't throw, oh, then we'll call, that won't happen. And if you use, we talked about it in other films as well, the more, the better you could imagine something, the better the immune system, the, not the immune system, the nervous system doesn't know the difference between imagine and real. So the better you imagine something, the more the nerve, nervous system will instruct the body into the positioning to perform the task that you are imagining. So throw away that disbelief really put your mind into it. And that's important, that belief. I'm not really a man of faith. But for a lot of this stuff in Tai Chi to work, you have to have a lot of belief in it. Okay, you can mirror me here, or you can copy the, the film behind here. I want you to drop the, I'm dropping the weight of the body down onto my right leg, breathing in, pushing over from the right to left leg, pushing up the left arm. Breathing out, sinking down, breathing left to right leg, pushing up the right arm. Breathing out, lowering down. So we went through this quite extensively in a, quite extensively in a previous film. Of tracing the fingers around a circle here, but not just doing it with your arm, you're doing it with a whole body like a, a pentagram. So, borrowing the strength of the earth, controlling the waist, issuing with the spine, feeling that strength to manifest itself in the hands and in the feet. Shoulders nice and relaxed. Again, arms are quite close to the body, so keep that small gap underneath each arm. I don't know why I talk a lot. I do talk a lot when I when I teach and, and when I do these films. One of the reasons I talk a lot is to keep you here in this moment, to not, not let your minds wander away. So if you're getting annoyed at me, talking, incessantly rattling on, at least you're annoyed in this moment. Your mind isn't wandering to the future or to the past, you are present. So I do talk a lot to keep people in the moment. Keep them focused. Breathing in. And breathing out. Okay, we're going to change this ever so slightly. So push up. And then sink. And push forward. And then draw the hand in. Breathing in. Sink. And draw the hand in. Still have that straight line down from the earlobe down to the very centre of the foot. Breathing in. Sink. Sitting down, more weight in the heel. Turn. Breathing in, and breathing out. So we have kind of a, a bit of a push, an extra push forwards here. Breathing in, and breathing out. Pushing forward. Breathing in. It's coming from the whole body. It's not just arm. It's coming from the whole body. Sitting down. Knee goes forwards, the hip goes backwards, the arm goes forwards. You sink down. The strength of the earth behind that little pull in. So you have a like, kind of an anjing feeling here. Anjing in the eight powers of Tai Chi, the eight powers, Pung Lu Ji, and Chanya Jo Kao. An is always translated as push, but it's more than a push. Anjing is this, <clears throat> this compress, like pushing a ball or a balloon down or something inflated into water, compressing and then releasing that compression. That's the, the, the push. But you can see how I kind of have an Anjing feeling here. So you have a Pung Jing feeling as well, Pung feeling, water feeling. In everything we do in Tai Chi, that expansive feeling, not stretch, but expansive. And it's as much mental as it is physical, but a lot more mental than it is physical. Again, a mind body connection. Breathing in. Breathing out. You can do this on, on both sides, or with both arms. You really get that and feeling that compression. And you could really sit. I'm just going to do the cross connection here. Let's 
bring some more wasteland into it. I'm going to turn it into a cloud house. Waving hands like clouds. Keep your jaw parallel to the floor, nose in line with the belly button, shoulders in line with your hips. Hips and shoulders parallel to each other and parallel to the floor. But follow your hands with your eyes, really focus on your hands. You could, I was reading something the other day, you could focus on the spaces in between the fingers. You can imagine here that you're dropping or pouring something from, from hand to hand. You're dropping a precious gem, a diamond or a ruby. Or pouring water from hand to hand. So you have this rotating of the forearms, a rotating of the waist, rotating the, the muscles of the legs. The whole body rotating, moving together. At the same time, the whole body should, should move like a rolling ball. So think about a ball when it rolls. When one part moves, every part moves. If one part stops, every part stops. No part of the ball moves independently of the rest of the ball. A big funky ball with it. So have that feeling in your body, the whole body moving like a rolling ball. A moving sphere. When one part moves, every part moves. One part stops, every part stops. And have that inflated feeling, like an inflated balloon or a ball. Inflated to its extreme. You don't like extremes in Tai Chi. They're not collapsed even, not flat. This is a pull. There's varying degrees of pull. As you can see in the different styles of Tai Chi, their uh, emphasis on, on pulling it uh, differs. It feels like expanding out in all directions. All directions. Like an inflated ball or an inflating balloon. Or a bubble. I kind of like the bubble one. You know a bubble, a delicate soapy bubble. It's strong because of its spherical shape. It has equal amounts of inward and outward pressure. Maintaining its spherical shape. So the bubble floating through the air, we're moving to the to the left, it's still expanding equally to the right, we're moving to the right, it's still expanding equally to the left, forwards, backwards, up and down. How that in this this of expanding, and yet not stretching, expanding, it's that feeling. Which again, only if you oh, I can't feel more, how does how does that work? comes through practice and working on being mindful thinking about it. when you're mindful and you think about it things start to happen feelings abilities this is cloud hands waving hands like clouds so let's uh, let's step out a little bit wider into a into a marble horse riding stance Let's drop down into keep the same leg movements going, but we'll drop down into Cheng's bear exercise. And we'll, we'll come back to uh, the cloud hands. So, as you're doing this movement, keep the sh nose in line with the belly button, shoulders in line with the hips, hips and shoulders parallel to each other and parallel to the floor. Keep your jaw parallel to the floor. Make sure you can see, you're looking, your jaw parallel to the floor, nose in line with the belly button. Make sure you can see the hands out the corner of each other. Sure, you can always see the hands up upon each other. This with the hips in line with the shoulders, nose in line with the belly button. Make sure that make sure that you don't turn from your upper back. I did read some. I can't remember already. It was many, many, many years ago. But a good one for if you do have joint problems, or heat joint problems here. You can imagine you're pouring a warm, fine sand through the joints, and it running through the joints. A warm, fine sand. Plus, with all this stuff, it's kind of if you do have problems like that, then work to your capabilities. It should be comfortable. For you. If, you, if you do have to do it very small, very, very small, and do it very, very small. If you want to make it more demanding, a little bit wider. I'm going to bring the arms back into it now. Back into cloudy hands, waving hands like clouds. I believe this move was originally called crossing hands, but apparently the symbol for crossing is very symbol to this, uh, very uh, similar to the symbol uh, cloudy or cloud. So over time it got uh, mispronounced or misread. Became cloud hands, but I like cloud hands. I like the imagery that you can uh, work on with cloud hands. You can imagine your arms are like clouds, as light as clouds. Imagine your body is as stable as a mountain. We know mountains form when tectonic plates push together, push up to form those peaks. So you can feel that connected to the ground, but that pushing up as stable as a mountain. Your arms as light as clouds, floating around your flanks. That expanded feeling, inflated feeling, like a bubble floating through the sky. Expanding in all directions, but inward pressure as well, maintaining your structure. It gives you that uh, tensegrity, but also a gentleness, a softness. 
know, the, the thickness of the, the skin of a bubble moon is oh, a degree one hundredth of the, the thickness of a human hair. It's that thin that it can separate the lights of the spectrum into the into its into its separate into its uh, seven colours. So you can see the rainbow colour on the, the surface of a bubble. Let's change it ever so slightly. So drop down, push it out, sink and drop, push it out. So we worked on this again in the previous film in the the Chenish uh, Qigong film quite extensively. So if you want. Uh, a whole session on that, then you, I'll, I'll link it up here. I'll link it up here. But if you're, as if you're scattering, it's often called scatter the petals, this one. Or like you're scattering seeds in the spring. Scattering seeds, so you're not just dropping them, you're skimming them out. All straight, not locked out. Breathing into one side. Bring out to the other side, up palm face up, the palm face down, and you can still see, keeping your jaw parallel to the floor, nose in love with the better, but you can still see both hands up the corner of each other. So they're never leaving your peripheral vision. Okay, so we're going to go into Chen Ching's uh, stag now. So turn your right toes out, push it up to the side. So in Chen Ching's four, it's 37 posture form, we only do this this move on, on this side, with the right foot forward. In other styles of Tai Chi, they'll do it with both foot forward, at the same time, of course. But they'll, it, throughout, through their form, they'll, they'll do this move on both sides. Uh, they call it part wild horse's mane, left and right. In Chen Ching's form, we only do this on the, uh, with the right foot forward, after we come out of Cloud Hand. Uh, after we come out of uh, Repulse the Monkey into Cloud Hand. Uh, my understanding of this is because uh, Chen Ching wanted to make sure that all the moves in the form had their martial application and their health application, the yin and the yang sides. He believed that a lot of the moves they didn't have their health application, so he removed them. But one of them, that's my understanding, my uh, paradigm. So understanding that he removed a lot of the, the repetition through the form to eliminate those moves that he didn't believe had any health applications, and the true health art and martial art. This move is said to be, uh, said to be uh, beneficial for the liver, your largest internal organ. Associated with uh, the wood element, the internal forest. Again, that. That's skimming a frisbee. Like flicking somebody with a wet tea towel. Like snapping string between the wrists. Tearing material. Like a stag, like a stag moving something with its antlers, but not just doing it with the with the, the arms. It's with the waist, the whole body behind the movement, that pungent feeling, that water feeling. Nose and on the belly button, shoulders and on the hips, hips and shoulders parallel to each other, parallel to the floor. Okay, so we're going to go into the, the what's often called tiger stepping now. So we're going to be uh, doing this what we worked on at the start. Uh, all the movements coming from the waist. Maintain your feet shoulder apart. Hands into prayer hands. Place them in front of your, in front of your dante, in front of your neighbor. You're going to keep your fingers in line with your nose. Head as if suspended from above. All the movements come from the waist. Drop the weight. I'm going to drop the weight onto my right leg first. You can mirror me here or follow the film from behind. Drop, turn, sink down, turn to the right ever so slightly. So we have this dong, dang, this swing and return. Swing and movement. Turn. Not really swing and movement. Here. Just going one way before going the other way. Push across. Knee stays in line with the toes. Relax the hips here. A straight line down from the earlobe down to the very center of the foot. Think, take a comfortable step forward. So, the, the, let me say the misstatement. Yeah, I suppose it is a mistake. It's going Chen Ching style Tai Chi. We try to maintain our feet shoulder apart. So, what what can happen if you hold a lot of tension around here in this area is a lot of people do. When they come to Tai Chi, first come to Tai Chi, the foot will swing forwards in here, which is okay in some styles of Tai Chi. In Chen Ching style, the width of the step is more important than the, the length of the step. So, really relax this area and take a comfortable step forward. Compressing this side of the body against the ground. So, release that compression. You set to push over to the front leg there. Give the majority of the weight in that front leg, so 50.01% weight of the body, and then so make sure the leg is substantial before you turn to bring the other foot round. And you are pulling that foot round using your waist. You're not just doing that with the hip flexor muscles here, you're turning the waist to pull it around using the connective tissue. 
pull that around. So you have a 45 degree angle between the two feet. When you finish this movie, you have more weight in that front leg. So you could do the 70-30 weight distribution here, which is uh, common in most in many styles of Tai Chi. Or you can do, uh, just make sure the front leg is substantial so you could have 51 to 49% of the weight there. Make sure the head is in the dead center, like a uh, isosceles triangle, you're not over one leg or the other leg, you're in the dead center. In Chen Ching style Tai Chi, we square the hips up. So we're facing straight forward. In other styles, they don't really emphasize this. They don't emphasize this uh, real this the real zong ding either, but we really make sure we tilt the pelvic area forward and keeping nice and upright. Make sure you're not holding a lot of tension in this area to to get that uh, to keep you there. Uh, this comes with time and practice. You have to relax more and more into the posture and get more upright and more square. Don't force it. Again, Tai Chi will not should not be forced. Back to shoulder width. Sink left. So if you want to go one way first, go the other way. I'm sinking left. My left leg turns to the left. Sink a bit further and push the foot out to the side. So again, we get that 90 degree uh, right angle. Push across, knee in line with the toes. Make sure the ribs don't flare out, the back doesn't curve in. That straight line from the earlobe down through the very center of the foot. More weight towards the rear of the foot, soften the instep. Sink and, or slight turn, sink and step. Maintain the feet shoulder part. Don't let the foot swing forwards and in. Maintain that shoulder part. Push across, or release that compression, use that to push you across. Get the majority of the weight in that front leg. And turn the waist to bring that foot around. Again, you're not just doing that. It's this turn to pull the foot around. So you have that 45 degree angle. Yeah, shoulder width, I've got my shoulder width there. Uh, square the hips up, pelvic area is tilted forwards, hanging down. And a 51 to 49 or 70 30 weight distribution hits in the dead center. Slipping back. Sink. Turn. So really stay present. There's a lot of coordination here. A lot of coordination. When we bring the arms into it, there's even more coordination. Make sure you are here in this moment. You might, you're not thinking. If you are further along the pattern, you don't know stuff, know this stuff already. Then your mind could be wandering away to, oh come on, when we're gonna, when we're gonna get finished here? Oh, move on to something more interesting. And you're missing the trick there. You kind of, again, you're not developing your tai chi. You're developing your, your impatience there. If you are truly in the moment, in the present. You don't have a chance to get bored. If you are just thinking about the future or the past, thinking about ending, then you are. Yeah, you're not developing your patience. You're not really developing the, the, the Tai Chi mindset either. You're really being in the moment, making it a truly moving meditative practice. And there's a lot, so much going on here for you to, to occupy that wandering uh, monkey mind, that magpie mind, the egoic mind. So much to occupy, occupy. Look at that interior section, your alignments, opening the joints, keeping as upright as you can, using the, the minimal amount of muscular effort, really working on that tensegrity, that biotensegrity of the body. Working on everything moving together, like a rolling ball. So there's so much to occupy that. That, that mind that just wants to entertain you. That's what wants to entertain you. To keep it busy, occupied. So let's bring the arms into it now. So I'm going to do it with my uh, left foot forward to start off, so it's uh, better to see on that camera there. So sink left, turn right. Roll, pop up your arm. It's so like the first exercise, or one of the first exercises we did, pop up your arm. So this is going into the tiger move here. So using your arm like the tiger uses its tail for balance. Push across, turn, knee along the toes, sitting down while waiting on the heel. Couple of step forwards, maintain feet shoulder apart, push across. The arm swings up, uh, or the hand swings up somewhere between the ear and the shoulder here. The left hand on the inside of the, the left thigh. As you turn your waist here, the whole body moves like a revolving door here. The foot comes around to 45 degrees. Hand brushes past the knee and the other hand is as if giving a high five. I've got the fair lady's hand here, so I'm not outstretched. Uh, I know I stick my little finger out here. I've, I've broken that knuckle in that finger and the finger next to it a few times, so it does stick out. Involuntary is it up thing. He has to be doing some like a Vulcan uh, kind of greeting here. Just does it. And what I'm not doing. Hand no further forward than the toes. In Chemaching style Tai Chi, when the hand goes further forward than the toes, it's you know, time to step. Challenging style touch is quite interesting. Okay, we'll just do it on this side for a while. So you maintain your feet shoulder apart and sitting back, tailbone points towards the floor, no further back than the center calf muscle. Front knee goes forward and on the toes, no further forward than the toes. And feel this strength 
the earth coming up, so compressing the body against the ground and then just releasing the compression. The elbows moving very little here. Your, your elbows are only moving because the waist is turning. You're not doing all this kind of movement with your elbows. Just pivoting at the elbows, you're not fulcrum at the elbow. We worked on this in uh, one of the last films I did with my kids uh, uh, in Rochel. Rochel, the soft hands, uh, the two person uh, like pushing hands drum. Rochel. Not leaving your, your center wide open here. Breathing in and breathing out. So the whole body in Tai Chi should move like a rolling ball. This same Tai Chi this way, but this, the body should move like a turning wheel. I already feel it in this one. You can imagine your waist is like the central hub of a wheel. Your arms and legs are like the spokes. Right, big lad. Okay. Nose and arm on the belly button, shoulders and on the hip. hip. Shoulders and over the hip, hips and shoulders parallel to each other and parallel to the floor. The whole body moving like a, a rolling and like, like a turning wheel. Like in your waist, it's like the central hub of a wheel. Your arms and legs are like the spokes. When the center moves, everything moves. So quite a small movement at your center, a bigger movement at your extremities. Like a turning wheel. Breathing in and breathing out. In and out. So Tai Chi is often called swimming on dry land. So you can apply that to this, that uh, imagery imagining to this now. You can imagine that you are in water. Imagine you're waist deep in water and you're moving through that water. Feeling the resistance of the water. Pushing through it. Moving around, making waves in the water. Nice strong connection with the ground. You're not pushing yourself up in the water. You're pushing yourself through the water. Breathing in. And breathing out. And again, the nervous system not knowing the difference between imagining real to the better you can imagine it better than the nervous system will put the body in, will position the body in, put the body into the positioning to perform these tasks that you are imagining. Breathing in and breathing out so what do you imagine? Okay, do it on the other side. So sink right, push across to come, use the arm like the, the cat, uses its tail for balance. Step, maintain your feet short apart, push across. And hand sweeps up, swings over somewhere between the ear and the shoulder, other hand on the inside of the knee. Turn the waist, the whole body moves like a revolving door. Make sure you're not leaning here. Whole body moves like a revolving door, keeping nice and upright. The foot comes around to 45 degrees, hand brushes past the knee, other hand as if, it, as, as if given a high five. Go no further forward than the toes. I know. I'm ready to get into this. I'm talking really, really fast. Now. I apologize. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, when I'm ready to get into it, I, my, my, my mouth can't keep up with, uh, what I'm, uh, with what I'm doing physically. So I, but I, I keep trying. Hand over the fourth on the toes, hands in the fair lady's hand. Even though the arms are at a different height here, I feel them balancing each other out like two sides of an equally balanced scale. Sink the chest round the back. Front stance, uh, we'll, do it, we'll do it like this again. So just moving, nose in line with the belly button, shoulders in line with the hips, hips and shoulders parallel to each other and parallel to the floor. Knee falls in line with the toes, no further forward on the toes. Second step under tail, then points forward the floor, no further back than the center of the car. So breathing in, and breathing out. Moving through water, swimming on dry land. Breathing in, ready to feel the strength of the earth behind this movement. Compressing the body against the ground, Bam. pushing against the ground, feel the world pushing back. Channels up through the body, control of the waist, issue of the spine. Borrow the strength of the earth, control the waist, issue of the spine, feel that strength manifest itself in the hands and in the fingers. Your arms not moving very much. The elbow's not moving very much here. Only moving because the waist is turning. Looking at the elbows, it's not fall from at the elbows. Nose and arm, the belly button, shoulders and arm, the hip, hips and shoulders parallel to each other, parallel to the floor, knee and arm, the toes and the form the toes. Swimming on dry land. Breathing in and breathing out. Uh, you can mirror me here or follow the film from behind. Uh, I'm going to sink with my left leg. Turn. Roll the pump. So we have this swing. Turn. Bring on the toes. Release. Step forward. Maintain your feet shoulder apart. Push across. Push the knee to twist this knee. Be nice and upright. Turn. Roll on the pump. Sink and step. Push across. Brush the knee. Twist this knee. So I have to be mindful here when I'm doing this, something I'm working on. Uh, 
that my knee doesn't go too far. Oops, yeah. Sitting down. I know it will help me uh, with my my in my Tai Chi, but I wouldn't have it. Let me go too far. So I'm putting a little bit too much pressure on my knees. So mindful, mindful. What's happening in the world at the moment is kind of there are lots of things that distract her, like thought patterns. intrusive thoughts. Even when we are doing our training, when we're doing our meditative practice, there's things coming to our head. So, I, yeah, I am focusing on being mindful about my knees. I'm wearing them now, but I did have to wear a, a knee brace for a, for a few days. Everything moving together. I feel like moving through water here. I'm sure, yeah, you're going one way the other way, using your arms like a, a tightrope walker uses his balance beam for balance, maintaining your feet shoulders apart, giving your jaw parallel to the floor, I know where there's a lot of coordination here and your kind of your your eyes can kind of drop down to where you're thinking about, and that's that mind-body connection, your nervous system positioning your body into the position of your, I'm thinking down there, so I'm, I'm looking down there as well, you have to look down there, you can feel down there, so again, we're really working on your interior section. So you have the feeling here as if you're walking on a trampoline or walking on a bouncy castle. So you feel like you're sinking down and bouncing out of the ground. I it often, not always, but often I get a, a song going through my head when I'm doing this. I know that's a distraction. I shouldn't let those intrusive thoughts come to your head. But I get the, the song by the police coming in. Giant steps are what we take. Walking on the moon. Imagine you're kind of walking on the moon like uh, Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. Streamline this a little bit, and again, you can stick on this. What we're doing here, if you that is the level you are at, but if you want to streamline a little bit, you can step back. And if you step back, turn foot out, and then it's easier to coordinate the, the movement of the breath with the movement so you can breathe there and breathe out. And you really get that dong dang, that swing and return, or that swing and movement. But again, if you if you, you you are getting those brain farts here and you can't do the coordination, then just go back to. Uh, the more ABC uh, way of doing it. And again, there's no, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Stages, the progress, or the process. I'm gonna say progress. The process should not be rushed. You miss out on so much. There'll be holes in your heart if you try to uh, skip stages. You don't want holes. You want a complete heart. Everything moving together like a rolling ball, like a turning wheel. Yeah. Moving through water. In the previous one, we you imagined uh, we're in the sea when we're doing our standing postures. Imagine we're in the sea, uh, shoulder deep, neck deep in the sea, feet on the seabed, with waves coming in from all different angles trying to push us over, and we're meeting all those waves at the same time. You can imagine that here. Imagine you're walking out into on, on a beach, walking out into the sea. The water's getting deeper and deeper. You feel it rushing past your legs, trying to push you back. Getting higher and higher until your neck deep. Safe head, safe above the water. The waves coming from all directions, trying to push you over. So you're meeting all these waves from all directions. Meeting them. And again, the better you can imagine, the better the body, the nervous system will instruct the body into the position to perform these tasks that you're imagining. Yeah. 
think my cat's trying to steal the show there. Yeah. Is that mister? Quite a big lad. Okay, and we can finish there. So that's my film for today. This is what I I, I do teach a lot, I've been teaching for many years and it's just a nice uh, routine to go through the animals. All the animals, we didn't work on the repulse the monkey there or the bird exercise. I've worked on the bird exercise in a previous film. But that we had the, uh, the bear, the stag and the tiger. Nice little sequence. Let's so practice it. Or, or, or don't practice that, but make sure you are practicing something. Uh, I hope it's helpful. I'm not going to waffle on too much to practice it or don't, but make sure you're practicing something. Don't let your immune system get sluggish. And when you get sluggish, your immune system gets sluggish. When your immune system gets sluggish, you are more susceptible to illness and your body breaking down and all the health issues associated, associated with uh, that uh, a sedentary lifestyle. So practice it or don't, but make sure you're practicing something and I will see you in the next film. So bye for